Welcome. Welcome, Penny. Thank you for your patience. It's been a very uh, bizarre time for me lately. Um, I had your reading pulled up like, literally like 10 days ago, um, but I made a very important decision. Um, I don't know if you saw it, see my posts, um, but I just you know, I basically have this, this remain, it's like the Romanian driver's license is like literally like mission impossible. Like I'm extremely good at memor memorization, anything that involves the brain I can fucking do. Um, and, um, the first time without studying that hard, you have to get 22 out of 26. The English is like horrible. I got 21 out of 26 in June and basically I only had till, I thought it was November, but it turns out it was December to just get it done. And I just decided, like, you know what? And I wasn't even thinking about how all these retrogrades were gonna hit, were gonna hit because thank God I did it last week because I was full of vitality and energy because I'm not right now. Um, not that it, that will have any bad effect on the screening. Like I'm totally the only re only reason I'm doing the screening is I feel good. It's two th two twenty a.m. and uh, I feel you know good, but I just posted about kind of a little update of just not having just having way lower energy lately um but some of the trends i have going on myself but yeah i passed the test so that was like a whole, a whole you know that took me till thursday um and then friday you know you start to feel like the, the full moon energy with the mercury retrograde and that was super intense i was expecting it's only tuesday i guess so you know i, I did do one last night so I'm getting I'm I'm getting back into it. Um, you know, usually after full moons, I'm just like, especially like full moons that like really like restrict me and like like where I don't do that many readings. Like I'm usually just like, boom, let's go, let's get them all done. But with this one, and it's just because of the overall energy and some of my transits, it's, it's just I've 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 been way like le I've had way less energy, um, and um, yeah, so, uh. Yeah, thanks for the patience. Now let's go ahead. So just just so you know, um, I have hidden your last name, um, and basically like I do these readings. Like I'll I'll I'll, I'll I go back and forth between showing my face. Uh, I prefer to kind of be off camera lately. Maybe that's a Neptune also. But like the reason I'm doing that, like I'll share I'll, I'll share right now, is that uh, you know like I like to have the chart shown, but I also like to kind of like meditate and 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 work with my crystals and walk around my apartment i do random things well, i didn't turn the the clock on so um yeah so like it, it's 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 helped me it's something i've started doing like semi-recently um and i pop in my i pop in when i need to pop in basically let me just make sure that my headphones are So yeah, um, let's go ahead and jump in. So very interesting, um, you know, twelfth house Scorpio moon, and this is so. You, I don't know if you've had other readings, but if you if you ever had a whole sign reading, this is going to be way way different than if you if you've had a plastic reading. Um, uh, in terms of like, I mean, you I've never seen a mid heaven in the twelfth house. <laughs> like, wow, um. Which yeah, with your twenty eight Sag rising, which means that you're um, there's no surprise that you chose me. I always find it interesting, like why, like why someone you know chose me as their astrologer to do their reading, and it's 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 very common that you know you see something like that. Like basically, like we have an exact, uh, exact to the degree trine. Like my ascendant's twenty eight Leo, your ascendant's twenty eight Sag, both fire signs, um, and then also yeah, like there's probably some other stuff too, and of course you know. You're having your north node in Aquarius, and my um, uh, south node is in Aquarius, and your north node. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. We have the same north nodes. We have the same north nodes, which is interesting because we're born. I'm born in '90, born in '71, so um, it's not like we were born the same year. So there's definitely some karma there, uh, some of the karmic lessons conjunct your sun. Very interesting. Um, okay, so let's start out by kind of going into 
Because, wow. Um, <laughs> mid heaven, you're born in London. That's crazy. So, in Placis, this chart would look so different. Um, you'd have, and I'll, I'll kind of like break down like kind of what that, a, a little bit of what that would mean. But basically, for the most part, you know, you'd have this. The, th the thing about Placis and whole sign is that I always give the metaphor of like, it's like, um, it's like, you know, two highways that get you to the same destination. That's the best metaphor I've ever like thought of for that, right? Um, because like, you know, in, in Placis, you'd have Mars, Jupiter, this whole block over here, Neptune in the 12th, super spiritual, um, you know, 12th house, but then in my, in, in whole signs on the system, um, you have it in the 12th house, your moon in Scorpio in the 12th house. So either way you go, you're a 12th houser. So let's start with that and let's talk kind of about like how, you know, you, know, you have a uh, elemental square between um, moon and sun. Um, some astrologers will skip over like I'm all about the big, big picture, right? My philosophy is kind of like I'd rather have like I want people to walk away from my readings with things that they remember their entire lives, you know, and some astrologers not to discredit anyone, but they will just go too far into sp like like very specific niche things that don't really hold that much importance. So like one thing I think I've mastered, or I don't want to say mastered, I'm always learning, but I become very proficient in is um, being able to weigh what's really, really important and what's less important, if that makes sense. And I'll still talk about everything, but yeah. So clearly, you know, as an Aquarius sun, uh, conjunct north node you know you're really in this lifetime trying to um and your chart rulers and you know is jupiter which is con you know conjunct um uh, neptune with yeah it, it's in the first house the so same house same sign as the, as the ascendant which is very very strong very very great indicator for 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 just being an overall lucky person um and um, very, very, like, imaginative, very, like, big picture oriented, a traveler, no doubt, especially south of the ninth house in Leo, someone who who is just very open minded, you know, and of course, you know, the Scorpio moon, which we'll talk about in a second, can kind of be difficult in that respect, because it can definitely um, complicate things on the emotional level. But that's the karma, right? So, so, um, you know, being the sun and fixed, and actually, I need to check one thing before I, and I think I, I, I'm just triple checking that you didn't leave me any like special notes. One sec. Let me go to my file, my secret file. Where's it? Here it is. Okay, good. And yeah, you have a follow-up session too, so very good. Okay, let's go back to share. So uh, definitely, like like in the like many people watch this over multiple times. I tell my advice to people: everyone has their own way of learning and kind of taking info. I always say like, you know, just take it easy the first time. Um, you know, just like like uh, I think it's best to kind of just watch it through and and this that and the fourth and then. If, if you watch, you know, while also like taking like the notes that I say are like very important, like I'll, there'll be times I'll be like, definitely like write this down to talk about the follow up. But yeah, like then like this, if you watch the second or even the third time, that's, you know, when you can get more detail with your notes, which can, um, which can lead to like the, the, uh, the follow up and the questions you, you would ask then. Um, but anyways, yeah, so having a fixed, um, moon and a fixed sun, um, it can create lots of stubbornness and um, <laughs> it can feel sort of like, you know, there's these two parts of you that these two like, like mouths that need to be fed that are just like very, very different. Um, so the Aquarius one, and, and then you look at the ascendant and like all that Sag energy. So you, you get, you, you, you get the sense just from, just from that alone that um, where's Venus at? And you, you even have like, yeah, Mercury, Venus is, is in Capricorn, so that's more on the on the side of of of, of uh, Scorpio. But you know, I always talk about like the psychology, you know, a split, right? Where there's like 
kind of two parts of the person now two parts of that being um i have the same thing with my chart being like with the pisces and like the other the whole rest of my chart pisces versus like sag leo and aquarius um kind of masculine versus feminine but um for you i definitely think that like the the more like kind of open-ended um just free spirit if you want to call it that like very yeah kind of like sag aquarius is all about freedom right both of them are all about freedom they're all about and, they, and you have a nice uh sextile exact sextile just about between uh ascendant 28 and sun at 27 um so basically um you know that there's definitely a part of you that's really 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 about <laughs> um freedom about individual individualism you know about really kind of like um and i already just got a download on how this can integrate um with the scorpio moon which is like you know the sh basically like the shadow work that the scorpio moon pushes you towards which can be really kind of odd for like someone who's an aquarius because you know they they typically like um aquarius is, can be quite aloof so you definitely be the kind of person that like probably like read like you know before before you were like into astrology or i don't even know your level um, but, but, you know, you definitely, obviously, if you follow me, you probably have a, a deeper understanding of astrology. You know, it's not just sun signs, but maybe there was a time in your life where you, you were more just into sun signs and you just probably net like to some extent resonated with like the Aquarius horoscope of the day and the whatever newspaper or magazine. But then there's this other big part that was missing. Right. And that is the Scorpio part. Um, so, yeah, it's a kind of a. Uh, put this in, in into like an image like like think of the aquarius part is the part that just doesn't give a shit you know it's gonna do it it's gonna like literally like do what it needs to do. it's it's gonna be itself and it's gonna expand like the sag part is gonna expand it's gonna want you to be very open-minded philosophical um and you know want to meet with kind of like like-minded people with your uranus and 11th house you know you'll You'll really want to be part of like a more unusual but like very very authentic groups of people and friend groups so you'll you'll you might have friends that might appear odd to like the, the brainwashed people of the world um but really your your friends are like you you really value like geniuses in friends right um and uh then you know we look at the blanked out yeah, so so just just the fact that you know Uranus is ruling your son and it's in the eleventh, you know, I imagine that like communicating third house and just like with the right types of people who like kind of are like minded, um, is huge for you. <laughs> um, and even with your North Node, you know, which is like kind of like your destiny point, like where you're really trying to get in this lifetime, and your Mercury, which is kind of how you communicate and how you think being also an Aquarius, um, you know, you're trying to move away from, and I have the same karma, right? I have a, I have a South Node Leo also. So it's, it's moving away from the I and moving towards the we. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use that, that, that kind of South Node Leo power and, and, and passion and, and ability to, to self start and to, to, to really kind of, um, you know, want to be kind of like the, the star in certain ways, but it has to be like directed towards, uh, improving the collective consciousness in some type of way right and i can give you an example from my life like when i was like really like like i, I like whenever i had like ego, more, more more like more desires that were like more when i was younger mostly like more based in ego right like uh i want to be a, a musician because i would be famous and you know girls would like me or something, something like that i don't know random thought but um like once i started doing astrology i realized i can have my leo right which comes out in my in my in my um you know just my personality to leo rising but i could also you know help people with it, which is what i'm doing now right helping you um or um and helping people with whatever content i create and all that and the fourth so um that's kind of like an example of how you can get both to work but yeah there's definitely a clear indication let's see the node squares nope uh a clear indication that you know, you've maybe focused a little bit too much on yourself uh, in past lives. You're very, very philosophical as well. So um, there could be like dogmatic tendencies, which I don't think 
exist in, because of, of, of the Sag and the Aquarius energy. I think, you know, you are very open-minded, but you do have to watch out for that, having, uh, you know, uh, plants and Sag like that, um, of being too sure. Like, so like the, the um, North Node in the third house is really asking you to be like, okay, so you, you know this. You spent a lot of time studying this. You spent a lot of time learning, you know, this this philosophy or whatever it is or traveling this place or kind of acquiring your worldview. But like test it, you know, like 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 go out into the field, kind of like it's almost like a journalist, right? And just test it out, you know, um, test it out. Don't be afraid of being wrong, and um, don't be yet yeah, dogmatic in your philosophies, if you want to call it that. So, um, yeah. But back to to my 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 original point, you know, with 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 the Aquarius. So Aquarius is all, you know, it's it's the it's the you know the the, um, the misunderstood one, the rebel, you know all the stuff about Aquarius, the alien, <laughs> the genius, um, the unconventional one. So there's a big push towards that, um, and then when the Scorpio moon comes in, especially being in the twelfth house, you know that a lot of times you know the moon is the mother. Um, some people argue the moon's always the mother. I have like proof for my own life that it's not the case um i would say the moon is the more uh traditionally feminine parent um the one that maybe played less of an imp impact in the life but a lot of times moon is the mom the majority so uh 12 house moons typically you know indicate like a not a, like a, a a mom that was like very like especially in scorpio like very strict um that didn't really meet your emotional needs Maybe she was absent or weak or something where, you know, sometimes like where you felt like like lots of karma, obviously, between you and her, um, you know, yeah, and it's square. It's, it's opposite Saturn, too. And Sun has a uh, square Neptune. Um, so. Yeah, like um, there can definitely be an energy there where. You know, you, you felt like there could have been like a traumatic like birth experience is one 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 pot one like potential that pops up a lot, you know, with with that placement. Um, so like that kind of, I know there's like there's therapy around like perinatal is it called perinatal therapy like where you like literally like go into your birth and like kind of re relive it and like any kind of trauma. And I swear like it sounds kind of wild to, to like make that kind of prediction because it's so specific, but like the amount of people I've, I've said that to who have actually been like, yeah, like, like I had like the, um, umbilical cord like tied around my neck and I nearly died or some, some crazy like story like that, you know, or like, um, you know, that has a big, deep psychological effect on us. So, um, but yeah, a lot of times like the Scorpio moon 12th house, like it's like uh, very important to kind of escape like your mother's quote unquote shit or shadow or like mother's less, you know, um, least dominant parent and um any restrictions or anything like you know the opposite of saturn like she could have been you know quite strict quite quite restrictive and kind of like infused you with this very very like big need to, to kind of rebel and kind of and, and be different you know um and being an aquarius that comes naturally and that's what you're meant to do so you you know you have if that is your mom karmically she's there for a reason one or for many reasons one it's to you know to to balance up the karma between you two um and we can talk about that in the follow-up of, of, of kind of how you experienced that and by the way just just so you know like, like what most people are doing instead of just getting only the follow-up um and, and I, I i had this idea after um you purchased your reading so i, I wasn't able to tell it to you then is that they do the follow-up um with a current astrology added reading, which I give it a reduced price. Um, so the follow-up's an hour and the current astrology, which, you know, I, it's basically like the, like this chart you get done once it's done. You know, it's, it's the book of your life. The, the current astrology is, is basically just like how all the current energies are affecting you. I, I was already kind of telling you about myself, how I have all these really difficult Neptune transits. They're making it difficult for me to, um, you know, with all the retrogrades already, those are kind of just triggering the triggering all that even more, but just making it more difficult for me to, I guess you could say, just um, get get through not get through life, but just like be as as, as dynamic and and fiery and and just on it as I as I tend to be. So um, that's that's definitely an option. 
Um, now, as I was saying, um, yeah, so, so like a big thing a lot of people kind of report back to me about um, with this is like their life changed when they kind of started to separate a little bit from their mother um, like and from her impact or you know, once again it could this could totally be your your father right um and um i think it's your mother because yeah because of several factors but like yeah once they started to kind of like separate like like this is my shit this is her shit like a lot of them like will will kind of hold on to that and it cannot the same thing can actually happen with both parents so you have your son square neptune so like really learning to kind of like differentiate like what's yours and what's theirs and then really individualizing is a huge karmic there's a huge karmic impetus towards that now um yeah you know moon opposite saturn is in moon and scorpio by itself is very difficult right because um as a woman it's it's easier tradition you know like i wrote uh one of the best articles ever was um about like the difficulty for men to have um sun um or moon in scorpio or capricorn but basically like you know it, it, it just makes the emotions very volatile um and square square mercury and opposite saturn is that t-square i believe so let's see yeah so they get t-square that 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 goes out in leo on the vertex wow so um you know basically like speaking like like the resolution so like basically like your emotion your logical side like that aquarius side the, but the, the side of it that comes out of your mouth and that you think the way you see the world can be really at odds with your emotional nature, which can be very, very hidden. So like, like there's the, with Scorpio moons, there's a really huge karmic impetus to like do shadow work to, to really like get to the bottom of like, uh, of, of their shadow because like they, they can, there can be self-sabotaging. Um, it's all about the whole death rebirth transformation thing. So it creates people who can be evil and it creates people who can be, just the most magical mystical uh healers right um and um but like one thing is for sure is that you know it does create very emotionally intense people um who can kind of swing back and forth and um you know being an aquarius like which is a very like i said disattached like less emotional sign sign while also being um you know, having a Scorpio moon, that can be just very, very confusing, right? So um, definitely, like, there's a need to kind of, like, you know, you have, like, like the, your sun sign's the most detached, um, cool-headed sign, and then your, your moon sign's the, the, the most, like, like, in like emotionally intense. Um, it can be very dramatic, too, um, and just very, very different, right? Like these are like it was, it's very very diff like difficult. Uh, the rapper, my favorite musician ever, actually, or second favorite musician ever, he had the same thing. XXX Tentacion. You know, I know what you know who he is, but he's dead, sadly, tragically. Um, but um, he was an Aquarius Sun Scorpio Moon, and he always was just like you know, like uh, you know, very very like just genius. He's a genius, you know, and he 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 he's very misunderstood. Um, but he was so authentic and, you know, he had a very large shadow side too. Um, but he was very vulnerable about it. And, um, you know, he really hit like a turning point and then he died as fucking sad shit ever. But yeah. Um, so that even talking about that kind of things, brings my energy, makes me look sad, but whatever. Okay. Not whatever, but yeah, we move on. Life goes on. Um, so yeah, there's the karmic impetus to, to, to really like, um, to, to do whatever work is necessary, um, to disconnect from, you know, but to definitely not disconnect from the emotions because the emotions, like people that have this, they, they, they will tend to kind of run away from the darker sides, you know, and just kind of like we lean more on the Scorpio, but then they'll like, it will always catch up. You can never like run away from your emotions. You know what I mean? So um the work is very very important um and you know just just in general um you know people who have 12th house moons like they need their alone time like like 
nobody else. Like they really, really need. It's not even like a like it's it, there's a, there's a, a need, right? I'm not saying want. It's a a need for a long time, and that's like kind of how they like process a lot of what what is happening for them and how they recharge their batteries. Um, they can be very, very esoteric and occult and you know like like super like 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 witches like connected to like the their dream life their imagination and to the, you know to the other side different dimensions all that stuff right so i definitely see this as like a very like very witchy kind of chart you know very like high spiritual potential and with the open mindedness of stage i don't think that the scorpion moon would really like uh win and it would just probably push you more towards that 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 um that shadow work that you probably knew at a young age you know you had to do because maybe there are situations where you just like kept running into issues and you're just like okay i need to fucking do something you know whether it was with a mother and relationships who knows um so yeah that's kind of a good illustration of like one side really wanting to be like like find themselves be different be their own person be a rebel and the other side and then like the, the the emotional side like you know scorpio moons also are very very private so um they're not the the types who for example like you know like like they're very very selective about like who they let in um so you know that's that's important and uh you know scorpio moon has an emotional need to have friends that they can literally like just like reveal all their deepest secrets too. And I always say that like, there's no more Scorpio, like Scorpio suns are not as Scorpio as Scorpio moons. Like that is the ultimate Scorpio placement, having the moon there. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting one. We'll definitely talk about that split more in, in the follow-up. Um, and then, you know, and then the, like the fact that like the the Mercury squares the Moon, it it just shows that like you know your your logic and your emotions are at odds, um, which can be ob- obviously problematic, um, um, which can lead to you know conflicts, um, like discuss like you know like um it it can it can just make one like not really want to trust their emotions. Also, that's a big Aquarian Aquarian trait too, to not really trust the emotions, and um to trust logic more, but then like with the 12th house, you know, it's very karmic and then, and, and things catch up with you. And then you realize like, shit, like I do need to like, you know, handle whatever it is that you need to handle. Um, and then the opposition with Saturn is, is I, you know, spoke uh, about a little bit. It's like, that is very, like people who have moon and Scorpion 12th house opposite Saturn. Like they typically, you know, so, like a lot of them have suffered um, depression throughout their lives, like melancholic times, um, which is another karmic impetus pushing you towards like, you know, being a healer, being, being, being some, or, or a healer slash, you know, like when I say a healer, I mean someone who heals themselves and then they have the ability to heal other people, whether they do, they do it or not, you know, that's, that's their, that's, that's them, their karma. Right. Um, but yeah, that, that's a tough one because basically what happens is that um, you feel it can really, really, especially until the Saturn turn around 30 there can be a real like like hindrance towards like self worth and like feeling like very like it can make it's really really hard for someone like that to open up to be vulnerable you know already it's hard enough for a Scorpio moon to be vulnerable with people when you have Saturn opposing it woo it's like a wall around the emotions so it can create someone who's a big time loner but then we look at like you know the rest of your chart and we see that split you know with like you know the the Sag Sag rising is a part of you that's going to be very, very active, right? Uh, on to the next adventure type energy, right? Um, so, yeah, lots of, of different energies. And besides that, right, you know, like, like just, yeah, like, just, like, freedom is so, so important. I can't stress that enough. With I also have these energies, Sag and Aquarius in my chart. Like, freedom, whether it's in a relationship, you know, just, like, um uh, needing your own space um and just like really ultimately more importantly like needing your your it's almost like your spiritual space to to really fully fully develop in in the highest potential you know what i mean um and when that isn't you know allowed or given or received it it, it can create lots of uh 
yeah, it, it can just make it like like no no relationship will work like one that doesn't have like that that ability to um to go deep you know to to go deep into the emotions to go deep into the the shadow this that and the fourth but then also like you know like so so there is a big split that will also happen in relationships because um you know you won't is it, no Aquarius person or Sag person is going to want someone that's really clingy or who holds them back from, especially your North Node and Aquarius, who holds them back from the, them expressing their authentic truth, right? Um, and um, yeah, so so then Sun, you know, in Aquarius is in third house, uh, you know, it just makes the area of life of communication. Uh, which you know I, I already spoke about with your North Node and, and really like being the journalist in your life and, and speaking to different people from different backgrounds and this down the fourth and really kind of just like being very curious. Like it's also a very, very, very great sign if you saw my post about signs of intelligence to have Mercury and Sun in the third house or either one of them. And you know, even having them in, in, in Aquarius can create geniuses. Um, people who think outside the box, people who aren't afraid to kind of speak, you know, their truth. So I'm very curious to kind of hear more about like, and we'll talk more about the Remy talk more about like the moon square Mercury. And hopefully we do, you know, the follow up and the current astrology. Cause the, the really great thing about that is that, and this is kind of what I, what I realized when I've been doing these is that you know, I only do like three to four max of those a week. Um, Cause they tend to, to, to last. Um, um, you know, three, two and a half to three hours. And the last one was like three twenty, but like uh, we spent a good amount of time, like, like, I, like, uh, you know, just talking, like not like kind of not procrastinating, but like we weren't like on it, on it. Um, uh, yeah. But, um, I, there's just like a seamless, like, um, shift basically from like me having your chart, which like, you know, directly in my mind to just going right into the current, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, like overall, like it's going to be tough, um, you know, with this chart, like, like the, the whole emotional stuff, once that's overcome, whatever, you know, and however that shows, showed up or, or shows up, uh, that's when like the whole point, you know, like emphasis of the chart kind of comes in. So it could literally just be like really difficult karma with like, you know, like the mother or whoever, um. But yeah, alone time is super needed. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but with the, with the third house stuff, um, yeah, just very, very, very good for intelligence. Very, very good for communicating and gen, just in general communicating and, and and thinking and thinking ahead of the of your curve, which can be or ahead of your time. And wow. Um. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, so that's that's really really great. Um, outside the box thinker. So I'm sure that you were able to kind of use that towards like, um, everything relating to your um, the shadow work that was needed. Um, but yeah, it definitely could have uh created some kind of painful times growing up for sure. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um. Then, um, you know, the mid heaven being in the 12th house, you know, you might have some kind of like career that's like in like some like kind of like, like, I don't know, like research or like some, something that really delves deep. Maybe you are a spiritual healer, like of some type, but like having mid heaven in 12, I don't know if I, have I ever seen that, but like really like, 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 you know, your purpose is really like collective based. Like you're really meant to, to help the collective and, uh, yeah. So very important stuff. Um, but yeah, people who have that sometimes can like work in like very like kind of behind the scenes institutions, things like hospitals, like in, uh, insane asylums. I don't know, just the random examples, right? Um, or they can be like even like in, like things like politics, you know, like behind the scenes, like kind of like that. So it, there's lots of different ways that it can show up. Um, so the sun square Neptune definitely um, can create 
uh, confusion around like, you know, it, it can be, it, it gets channeled into, you know, um, something positive, but it can definitely like have created like lots like, like, like issues around like self-esteem and like, who am I kind of energy. And one of the great ways to kind of go around that is to use uh, cameras and mirrors. They, they're like a, a great healer tool from um, that Neptune rules both of them. But um, yeah, they're, they're like when I think of like, you know, sun square Neptune, like that could speak to the father being like kind of like a confusion, a confusion around like where you stand with the father or just like the relationship in general. Um, and um, but like in my experience, you know, it hasn't always like resulted in like a negative relationship with the father. Um, that's kind of what I've noticed. And what ends up happening when it integrates is that it makes you very, very in touch with that, like that imaginative, imaginative side of yourself. Um, we can kind of turn your, your, your dreams into your, you know, your actual dreams, imaginations and intuitions into your reality, which is a beautiful thing, obviously. Um, But yeah, like it, it definitely is like 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 I've seen in tons of your chart already. Like like you know, people come to me and I see common themes where it's like this energy that was most definitely very difficult in youth that most likely led them, you know, towards difficult situations, but eventually towards like I don't want to say enlightenment, but you know what I mean, like your own version of that, like a like a a. a you know, a heightened, heightened level of consciousness and just like a overall better outcome than you would have had, had you just kind of, kind of played the, uh, the safe route, you know, the, 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 just like, um, you know, the route of just having an easy life and not having these aspects and, and taking on this karma. So very good stuff. Um, no, 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 no. Um, uh, Sun square Jupiter, that's like, I have that too, that you, you just got to watch out for like risking too much. Like it's the kind of the energy of the person who walks in the casino and thinks they're automatically going to win. It can also give great leadership powers once it's integrated, but like it can create energy for someone like, like until I totally see this myself where you know you think you can handle anything you think you think like there can be like an over expansiveness basically so it's like all about like grounding um and learning like kind of having like realistic expectations and um like kind of yeah going not overworking yourself and knowing that like like it's kind of like I, I called it superman syndrome yesterday when i was speaking about it um and yeah, Mercury is also, like I said, square Saturn. So that can uh, have someone because, you know, they may have thought differently or had like a different approach towards the, their their communication and that this, that, and the fourth and the way they thought. They could have been, and had parents who were like very different or schooling systems are different. They could internalize the thought early on that they were stupid or that their way of thinking was flawed and they it makes them kind of like not like very shy. And like not wanting, not like, like like with like way less of a desire to like truly express themselves, right? With fear of like being judged and the sad in return like makes that a lot easier also. Um but as an Aquarius, you know, that you know, that 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 will be pushed away to an extent to where like um you know Aquarius is just give less of a shit than other signs. So even with that square I think it, it probably still played a role, but maybe it was something that was like kind of overcome earlier. And um, de yeah, definitely. Like I love the the Mercury trine, Uranus, sextile Mars, like just a very like um, very individualistic way of of thinking and seeing the world, and probably very good for creativity. And then Placidus, would it be in the second house of money so um you know in that from that 
kind of perspective it would speak of like being someone who would like have really really creative kind of nuanced money making schemes um kind of like seeing ahead of the curve and um yeah like uh which could be great for anything like i was gonna say finance but because you know finance you kind of have to know like be able to predict things anything that you know you know speculation and being able to like predict things is 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 good because also the scorpio moon is very analytical and very very good with research especially uh with the midheaven there and even like midheaven conjunct moon it means that you'll really need to have that scorpionic like 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 connection that deep deep emotional connection with your career slash dharma like what you're doing like your big picture of like what you're doing um so with the love, 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 um, and then you also have Pluto <laughs> square ascendant. Um, that's that's a tough one. Um, I'm just drinking this magnesium B six drink. One second. I didn't even notice that one. Um, um, so yeah, like Pluto obviously is, is a sign of death, rebirth, transformation. So this kind of goes along with the theme of like um, it rules Scorpio. So this goes along with the theme of 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 um, you know, your ascendant. Um, you know, your your outer personality. It's kind of like the vehicle to which you, you kind of, like, go through life, like, this would make you, like, extremely competitive. Um, it can make give, like, a subconscious fear that others are trying to control you. Uh, it could create lots of, like, out, outer, out, outer dramas, while the Scorpio Moon can create the inner ones, so they can kind of collide. Um, and there can be this, like, subconscious fear of being taken advantage of, right, which can be very difficult for relationships. And they can make, yeah, make one very secretive as well. Stubborn, jealous. But also it gives like a very, very powerful influence over other people. It can make someone quite controversial. Um, so you have to watch out for your intensity to like not let it spiral, spiral out of control. Um... And, like, the whole thing is, like, learning to let go, learning to compromise and trust, like, that life is a big lesson for you overall, right? Um, and it can definitely make one, like, 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 with the Scorpio moon, obviously very, like, into the dark and mysterious uh, parts of life. Um, it can also make you infatuated with very intense or dangerous people, like drug addicts or criminals also like a deep curiosity about sexuality and this is also scorpio moon stuff too um so like taboo areas also it can cause a fear of losing the father um there can be ocd um like domestic violence like all kinds of like really like like kind of like victimization uh, all kinds of really, really like um, difficult things. And it makes ones very, very like forthright and just like penetrating. Like, like so be, it can be like a lot for for um, for people, but also like as I said, a high degree of spiritual evolution is needed to kind of transcend that need for power and control in intimate relationships. So, yeah, um, and, like, that kind of goes with the Scorpio moon. So, yeah. Um, so, love, 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 love. Um, Venus in Capricorn, Juno in uh, um, Taurus in the sixth. 
Mars and Sag Moon. So with Love, it's it's also a split, right? Um, you you got one part, you know, Scorpio Moon. Like obviously they need that extreme closeness that, like I said before, like the two souls becoming one, all that stuff. But then on another level, um, there's definitely like a need as an Aquarius to have some level of like separation and some level of coolness. So like kind of going between those two extremes is probably very challenging. And, um, but like, I, I think that like, as I said earlier, the shadow work that you've likely done has probably made this like very easy or, or a lot easier. Um, and probably likely more now something along the lines of like, you know, someone who understands that, you know, there will be mood swings. Um, likely. I mean, I, I haven't met a Scorpio moon that doesn't have mood swings. Um, that, you know, you might be more like involved with your shadow side and um, someone who respects that. But also like Venus in, in, um, Square Uranus, interesting. Wow, <laughs> so that's interesting. So Venus is in Capricorn, which is usually very traditional, um, all about having like a very solid foundation. The relationship with the Scorpio Moon totally backs that up. But then Square Uranus will make you like feel. It, so this is speaking more about that split. It will make you feel kind of like, um, it will make you feel kind of like like if things get too clingy, um it can kind of make you like feel like relationships can almost be like a prison. Like they can, they can almost feel like a prison and you, you'll, you'll feel a need to like really escape any like very restraining relationships while, but you'll also have the desire to be in very, very solid ones. Like I always get the metaphor of like, it's like building a, um, you know, when you build like a, a skyscraper or when someone, build a skyscraper like they take so much time on the on the foundations foundational part right um so it's kind of like that but just like energetically um but yeah this yeah so interesting the square theory is um yeah so that split is definitely probably showing up has shown up quite a bit. And then, you know, all that Sagittarius energy and just being Aquarius in general is just like, you know, like a big need for freedom. So I think that's probably the overwhelming part, a big need for freedom, but also like a need for like a relationship, like, 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 you know, you, with the, the Senate and Gemini, like you need to be like really best friends um, with your partner. And if that isn't possible, like, like you really need to have that intellectual connection with them. Um, intellectual slash like philosophical, like, like really speaking about these types of subjects. And um, yeah, especially as a Mer with, with, Mer with all the Aquarius. Now, let's see here. The triumph with Venus in Saturn is very good for being able to have long-term relationships. So that's kind of like a very a, a very nice uh, kind of addition because it gives you this ability to um, within your relationships kind of make it through the tough times, um, which is obviously a very very good thing. Um, and it's like think of it like with 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 your very like karmic relationships, it's like the glue that kind of there's like a certain karmic glue that kind of holds everything together in a way. And um, I don't see how that could be seen as a bad thing. So even if things get a little bit tough, you can kind of I'm saying kind of a lot. You can rely, you, you, you like th things things will will, will stay together. And there'll be lots of fate and karma learned through relationships. Um, yeah, so that's very interesting. You know, Mars and Sag, you know, you'll you'll be very like 
like in the first house, like someone, um, whether it's the 12th or the first, depending on the house system, like it'll be someone who really wants to explore like the, 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 the deeper realms, but also like in the first houses, I'm seeing it, um, like really like very, 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 very assertive, powerful energy, forward moving, um, just, like the adventurous kind of gypsy spirit, like the philosopher, the gypsy who turns into philosopher, who turns into teacher, like, and just like, like that being like a huge part of your personality as, as Mars and ascendant in the same house. If you're not like someone who's traveled a lot or who's just learned a shit ton, like I would be like, like there's no, it's impossible. Um, Mars is unaspected, um, meaning that, like, uh, you know, you can kind of I'll put my face back on for a little bit. Like you, you almost have to like. There I am. You almost have to like watch out for like this like over expansion. If that makes sense. Um. Um. I I, I spoke on that before, but. Yeah, with Mars, it's like this untamed energy, right? Like, like a, an aspect of Mars is like a wild horse that you have to l learn to tame. Like, like, like super powerful, um, just goes towards what it wants with this like vigor and this like, like, like it can be very impulsive. The fire ascendant, um, so it's really important to like, uh, and also like, like, like when it comes to anger, right? Because the Scorpio moon can have anger, it can be very, very just like you know, uh, head on with that. So it's re really important to find like, um, you know, different, um, ways to, to shift that different outlets, creative or physical, physical Mars is definitely in the physical. Um, so like directing your, your energy is really important. And yeah, with that right, um, correct outlet, um, you'll have like this endless motivation that can just keep you going for forever, basically. And it's just this fire, this very fiery energy that I'm just, like, I can, I can feel it, you know? Um, I think it just happened. One second. I just made a mistake. Oh, God, where did I just put that? Here it is, thank God. It's twenty no, it's not right, but that's not it. Okay, whatever. I guess you can't find that. Um so yeah, that's kind of that. Um <clears throat> So yeah, a uh, Venus, you know, in in uh, um square Uranus, you have to watch out for like uh well there's there's this mix. So Venus in 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 Capricorn can be quite conservative with money. They can really value depend. They really value dependability, um, consistency, just in general. 
in themselves and in partners. But then in the square with Uranus, they value originality. They're very rebellious. They, you know, the and you have to watch out for like overspending too. That's another thing. So, um, yeah. In the second house, Venus in the second house is just a beautiful thing for finances. Makes them really value beautiful possessions. Um, very comfortable with money. And uh, really like this really great manifesting energy. Now, Venus in um, Capricorn 2 can make one quite shy in relationships. This is another indicator of the Saturn return being this massive shift for you. Uh, someone who likes to slowly form relationships. But then, of course, that's square with Uranus. The split, right? We have to talk about the split. Hi, Amika. Give me a kiss. Kiss. Reach. Good girl. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people with, with this kind of chart, like, um, you know, they, they, they're, they, 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 they form their more meaningful relationships, like, after the Saturn return. And then Juno is in Taurus, so that speaks more to like the the need for a dependable, consistent partner in the sixth house, you know, organized, grounding. And you have water, fire, obviously, air, no earth. So yeah. Um or actually no, you do have earth, you have Venus, but yeah. So yeah, you have every every element present. Very good. But, you know, maybe, you know, ha like the, the, the Juno there, it just speaks to really like wanting that person. Because as a Scorpio moon, it can be, there can be so much like instability and back and forthness um, with up and downs with the emotions that like it really, I've noticed that lots of Scorpio moon people um, tend to really like ha to have that very like, like just solid individual who might have some earth in their chart, Taurus, Cat, Virgo. Um, who they know, you know, is going to be like, you can add cancer in there, even though it's, even though it's not uh, that sign. For that element. Someone who they, they know, like, you know, they, they can kind of depend on to be the same person day after day. Who's not going to, you know, judge them and who's very easygoing. Good sense of humor, too. Which I, I believe you have based on some different things I've seen. Um, okay, what else? Let's see. So Neptune the first, that's all about like manifesting <laughs> your imagination. Um, you know, if it was in the 12th house, it's just like speaking to like just being so connected to like the collective unconscious and into your own unconscious and, and just just the unconscious in general of, of, of the world and of, of the self and of people around you. And just like so psychic, um, which I believe, you know, the 12th house moon in Scorpio definitely does, too. Um, but yeah, like in the first house, it's like about like how, how can you take your, um, your aspirations, deepest dreams, things that, you know, that are literally in your actual dreams or in your meditations or in like, you know, whatever, and turn them into your reality, turn them into your life work. Right. Um, Jupiter in the first house, like I said, it's very good for popularity. It's very good for like having this, like. Like it's already, you know, like I said, you're already satirizing. So you'll be someone who just like <laughs> really like, like, like I, I imagine in your chart, and this is something I haven't really touched on, that people probably like don't sense that Scorpio side at all until they really get to know you deep. And there's probably this like this shock. Um, and maybe it's had issues, you know, create issues in relationships of any, any sort when people expect you to be more of this kind of, floaty aquarius you know sad free spirit all this and that and then you are that but then you have this also really really intense deep emotional part that um yeah um might shock some people and um so jupiter in the first definitely um someone who can inspire other people's other, other people's other people, very great for leadership, very good for, for the body also and physical health. Um, which with that said, you know, having Saturn the sixth, that can, you know, you have to really watch out for like um, workaholism and uh, really mind like the, the body mind connection. 
um, and like kind of like somatic psychology, just like how, you know, if uh, a certain part of your, if you're having a health issue, like it, it's like, like find really finding the relation between um you know that and um and your you know w between the two right that's like really important um but usually like you know that you know that that gets also better um after the Saturn return so good stuff there um Saturn the sixth house though overall is a very very good placement it likes being in the 10th the most but sixth and second also um and it, you know I have it there too so like it just creates like someone who's very organized who's a hard worker who knows you know that it it's there's it's there's steps that it takes to get to a goal you know you can't just have like this lot the imagination you have to put in the work you have to have the to-do list you have to have the routine you have to you know be legit or it's just not going to work so that's you know very uh like important for that placement and um what else what's that in sixth house what else could i say um You can definitely benefit a lot through pets, have karmic relationships with pets. Um, you know, being being Aquarius, like all Aquarius I've ever met, love cats pretty much, but they're literally they are cat they are cats themselves. Aquariuses are cats. Um and yeah, what else? Um let's see. It's Close to your IC, so like in a plastic, it would rule your it would be in your fourth house, um, which would indicate like restrictions in the childhood and really like feeling like you couldn't like voice your true self in childhood and kind of how that has to be like uh, overcome in order to fully fully integrate everything with the career. So stuff like going back to stuff with the mother and the mother mainly and potentially father, depending on who's who. And then, you know, you have um, the, let's see. Jupiter trying Chiron. So you, you can be like a very, very strong healer. Um, lots of luck when you start to like kind of heal yourself and heal others. Now you Chiron's in Aries, a fire sign. I guess I'll, I'll finish this reading. Or maybe not finish it, but... Um, with the camera on. But, yeah, so so basically, like, uh, Chiron and Aries in the fifth, that totally has to do with someone who um, wasn't really allowed to be a kid and needs to learn to, like, express their, their, their inner child and their creative self, let themselves just go. You know, let, let that fiery side of you just go. Um let yourself be a pioneer, let yourself express that Sag energy, um, you know, that fire Sag Mars, you know, just let yourself like a lot of people who have that, they, they, their parents kind of embody, like put this message in them that, you know, they, they weren't like smart enough or that their way of thinking was flawed and, uh, parents slash like kind of early environment. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's like, you, you feel like your personal power was kind of eroded when you were you know young and um also like the creative expression right um so like 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 maybe like you weren't like really allowed to be a kid with the you know the moon opposite saturn maybe you had like big ass responsibilities where you you felt like uh, like you had to be the mom of your own mom cat staring at me my scorpio cat as i talk about scorpio a lot of people are, like like didn't have the fun that they needed to have in childhood, childhood. So you need to like, you know, really, really dive into that inner child work if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, with Aries, it's just like about like, like also like fearing, like asserting yourself, right? Um, like your sense of being had been violated in some type of way. Um, 
And sometimes people can overcompensate by trying to be first at everything. There can be head wounds, like, because there's bulls ahead. Um, but, like, overall, you can be, like, a very, like, Aries is the pioneer. So you can be, like, a pioneer in some type of healing that helps service humanity, which I see all over your chart. Um, Yeah, definitely with your Mercury and your Sun, like I think you'd be someone who's very like into like lots of different media. Maybe you're a writer, um, or someone who's who 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 just would love to communicate and has different like like channels of doing that. Part of Fortune in Aries and Fifth House, like it's kind of like saying that like by following it's conjunct your Chiron, so by 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 following that um that heal that kind of everything I just said. I'm not gonna repeat myself about the Chiron by following that. And by, by being that pioneer, by being that that person that goes deep into their inner child and lets himself go and and, be, and have fun, um, that's where you find like your flow state, your raise joy, all that stuff. So definitely fifth house Aries, like like let the fire, you know, let yourself go. Um, and it, it totally relates to like the individualism, right? Because it's it's like a, a sex telling by sign, you know, your your virus energy. So, um, you know, and having the North node conjunct with sun is very important because um, it's literally saying that, you know, you are in a past life, right? When there's a, the, the opposition of South node in, in sun that you were opposed by like something larger than life, like something that was so overbearing that like it completely repressed your individuality. In this life, you're meant to completely go into the highest energy of Aquarius. Um you're supposed to really, really just dive deep into Aquarius, you know, um, and and be that own person and not give a shit. Find like minded people, create communities, um, have larger life goals that might even seem impossible, you know, and just side, you know, side with truth. Even if it means that, you know, not everyone agrees with you, like having that honor. Um. Yeah, so with traveling and once again Vertex Ninth, like Leo, like you know, you'll you'll find lots of uh your door to higher awareness will be through through traveling. You know, Vertex and Leo, people like in love, they um they like to have fun. You know, they they like to kinda like uh be adventurous and, and um and and there can be a little bit of dra of, of being dramatic, but yeah, they really like to be they present themselves as kinda like quite fun and, 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 um, you know, extroverted partners. Um, not all the time, but yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, yeah, I think there's definitely like a big, uh, karmic kind of past life, um, connection between you and whatever you do for your career that is clear to me um also like w one thing with going back to neptune the first like there can be like a a lack of boundaries between others and yourself um and there can also have you know have or be like some vagueness in terms of self-expression um where you can like really create like a fantasy world of your own and you really might need to like, especially with the square of the sun and, and Neptune, like really clear, like there, there's this big need to like go deep in the self and to like, and it can really, like I said, it can be done through creative outlets, which is like what your Chiron fifth house or part fortune to clarify who you really are, your identity, which is like literally what your chart's asking. It's like, it's like finding identity, right? Amidst like the stormy Scorpio moon ups and downs. Um, Uranus and Eleventh, I spoke on that already. <laughs> you know, you like to be parts of groups of you know that whole thing of like like-minded people who who um can help you kind of like break out of like past life conditioning and 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 find more truth and and stuff of that nature. So yeah, um, I just think that you like you probably have to watch out for pe like jealousy, people being jealous of you, um. Just put that Jupiter in the first house, like, like bull. Um, 
and the fact that's you know indignity in Sagittarius is just like you are you know the inspirational teacher like regardless of what you do you are that that inspirational person um yeah I can definitely give like a larger than life um presence and then even like your senate 20 degrees that's the, the sagittarian degree so it kind of puts that even further um and the mars at 15 is the gemini degree so that's like like adding more of that kind of like communication ability to really communicate your your thoughts in in, in a straightforward way um but then of course there's that whole moon square square um mercury thing that can get in the way um as i mentioned earlier um okay so kind of ending soonish um or soon pluto in the 10th so 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 pluto in the 10th like literally like people have that like they're meant to make a big impact especially 29 degrees it's like the, the critical degree like you're ending a cycle you're meant to really really make a big impact career-wise like i said it's like very connected to your karma like what you're doing like for your career for your you know like and it, it's like some people like they're like but i don't work you know i, I like i'm like i practice my spirituality and um you know i like have like more of a spiritual life path that's totally totally cool that's totally you know like 10th house is not just career it's it's dharma so it's like your life purpose um and yeah like like it's 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 about like it's very powerful so it's like 10th house pluto people tend to be very very uh you just have to watch out for being like overly dominant when it comes to career and when it comes to like 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 pushing people over to get to the top and that like is furthered by that black moon Lilith in Virgo, which is kind of like your 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 shadow side of like um like it's like I just saw a meme like before I started the reading on my Instagram that was like if you can't handle me handle me at my black moon Lilith then you don't get my Venus. I was like I usually don't like the astrology memes like like they're kind of dumb like not dumb but just kind of simplified but like that one was like that one actually kind of made sense you know um. Because Black Moon Lilith, like Venus, is really like you know you at your best, like kind of plan of love, all that. Um, but then um, Black Moon Lilith is is not a planet; it's a it's a it's a calculated point based on the apogee of the moon. I'm saying that correctly. Um, and basically, you know, it is saying in Virgo in tenth house exactly what I just said about the Pluto. You know that you know you have to watch out for kind of stepping stepping over people, um, and like 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 um, when it comes to like career, you know, you you, know, you definitely will be a very powerful leader. Typically, tenth house people people are, you know, powerful leaders in whatever their their chosen career, and um, yeah, like w w with the black moon you know, in Virgo, it's like also. A reminder of, of of like I said before, the Saturn of not being too hard on yourself, not overworking yourself, right? Because maybe there's this feeling of like having to overcompensate for like something, some some message that you got from the parents when you're younger, right? Maybe they determine your value based on you know your 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 grades or your success or what your your status or stuff like that, and you might still feel it unconsciously. So you know, being able to like understand that as a Vir Virgo, Black and Lilith, um, you know. If your best one day is like, 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 like I'm a perfect example today, like, like in, in these last few days, right. It's been very, very hard for me to work. Um, but I, I, I've tried to be like, not, not so hard on myself. I just understand it's a really intense energy. And, um, you know, just knowing that like, if the best you can do one day is like a 30 out of a hundred cool self-compassion. It's like, it's like teaching yourself, like how to be your own best friend how, or like, not, no, no. It's like it's like um self compassion. I think of it as like treating yourself how you would treat your your actual best friend. You wouldn't be all like super critical towards your best friend, you know. Um, what else? I had something else in mind about Black and Lilith and Virgo. Oh yeah, also Black and Lilith, like by house placement. What I just learned recently is uh, where people can be jealous of you of. So definitely don't like if you have like a really lofty like career. Um, or something going on like like on that level definitely like don't post that like on social media like when it ha anything like that has to do with like social status like um you know your job your career like like keep it more secret because people can kind of send bad energy your way um if if that is the case right so um one second
So yeah, there can be like like I said, like an air of superiority that can if you're like working with other people, it can like kind of like uh be diff it can actually like lead to like worse outcomes. So like it's all about like like appreciating your your colleagues and people you work with skills and, and being more team oriented in that sense. Um and yeah, with the with the Virgo it's also about like feeling like you always have to live up to like like I said, like other people's high standards and expectations. So you, like really analyzing like what like 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 what are your ex like like what do you expect from yourself and is it realistic and is it healthy um so yeah just like not setting yourself up for like that 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 inevitable fall if you can't meet your 110 percent perfectionism right where you push yourself too hard and then it ends up like lowering your vibration the work-life balance all that stuff um so yeah learning to kind of relax i guess is, is very important. Um, and I think traveling is like literally like the most amazing thing for you. Aside from that, um, and you know, we'll talk about, uh, more about all these. Let's okay. Let's, let's see what's going on with the stars. I know I've never called them stars, but I just said that stars and asteroids, anything. So I'm looking for big fish. Remember I'm a big fisherman. I'm not, I never fished in my life. Uh, I never, uh, I never caught a fish. I bet I'm just about um nothing against it. I eat fish occasion. Um so your ascendant's close to the galactic center. So that would you know it's two degrees away, so it's kinda like I don't know. But that's like a very, very spiritual point. So um it would just like create someone like very, very spiritual, but like I don't want to go too far into that because it is kind of separated a little bit. Um Let's see. So Vega conjunct Venus, that's very good for money once again. Money, money, money. Let me just double check that one though. Yeah, it's like very benevolent star. I like Vega. It's two degrees away, so it's not like a, playing a huge role. But um, yeah, it's like good for like like riches. Um, but like you have to like like the the wealth can be lost again. Um, and it is square Uranus, so you have to really watch out like with how you're spending. Sun is doing no. It's it's con it's it's core it's close to lust, but not like like that close. But basically, just like um, that can give like kind of a sexual energy to the personality. And it's also kind of close. Your north node is conjunct astronomy, so you you might have it like a, you might be meant to be an astrologer. Um, although I, I, I don't really know about like, uh, North node in asteroids and the conjunctions, but, uh, if that one resonates, it resonates, you know, what can I say? Um, let's see here. Okay. Here. Ooh, damn. The the beel juice, yeah, beel. So you have you have a lot of your uh you have beel juice, which is a wealth star conjunct your descendant. So that could indicate, um, you know, wealth in terms of like your marriage partner, um, or just being able to like really yeah, uh, have lots of like faded luck when it comes to money, um, with other people, um, but more so in the sense of like partnerships, whether it's business partnerships or you know, usually it's like you know love or marriage um let's see here nothing there nothing there and okay so three and 12 scorpio and 28 sag let's just like look a little bit further So you're gonna be like, oh yeah, you have Alfeca, 
on your midheaven. Let's see what that one's all about. And then with the Sag, you had... What degree is it? Point forty, so it will be closer to acumen, but let's look at etamine too. Okay, so first of all, I might not be able to find anything about this. So yeah, like acumen. It typically gives like weak sight, sore eyes, um, just a random thing, but there's not much uh on it. But etamine, the one that was really wait, which one was really close one? Acumen. So it's like adventurous. Yeah, weak sight, sore eyes, trouble and loss to a woman, accumulating. Blah, blah. So yeah, it can actually cause blindness. Um, hmm. Not much else about this besides the part about the eyes. Now, with etamine, let's see what. So, honor, no. That one seems okay. And this one is like really not giving us any information, but it does say honor and preferment. But, but it's, uh, is it one, it, no, this one, this one's more important etamine. It, it has a larger orb. So, um, Let's see what it says. The right eye of the dragon. Dignified, pious, conservative, uh, acquisitive, retentive. Um, a liking for solitude, good mental concentration. That's mean. It's just something like the planet planetary simile is Mars Moon. Since both star the star and its name stake Rabastan Alawide are commonly regarded as the two eyes in the head, there may be something here of the old notion that one's right eye sees good, the left eye sees evil. Mars Moon is never popular as a combination of astrology, before it often shows the indication to look on the black side of things. Uh, we are here looking perhaps at the source of morbid tendencies in us, but the strength of Hercules to slay it for us, blah, blah, blah. And those who do overcome their own states of anxiety and depression, revealed by Mars slash Moon, there's always that power to heal others also, which goes perfectly to a chart. Okay. So then, Alfeca, conjunct your son. Legit to the degree. Um... Venus and Mercury, so that's idealistic, psychic, hands, uh, beautiful, neat, lovable, refined, gentle, intelligent, gives honor, dignity, and poetical and artistic ability. I said something about writing earlier. I need to add this one to my list. Um, yeah, so it's all very artistic ability, very like super Venusian. Interesting. Um, let's see what it says about the sun. Active and brilliant mind, self-seeking, subject to skill that does not affect the position, honors and preferment. Damn, it's rare that I see one that's so fucking good. And like it just goes on and on and on about um wait one second. It's an image of, of a hen or crowed man. Yeah, it gives chastity and the love of goodwill of men. Rules, topaz, rosemary, trefoil, and ivy. Honor, dignity, artistability. Okay. Is it much after like hedonism? Wait, 
Okay, hold up. 12. This is nuts. Is this Gemma? Is that like a Gemma? Is it the same thing? Because that... Yeah. Damn. So, yeah, I, I know this one. Um, Gemma. Yeah, so 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 I know that Alpha was Gamma. So I have I have I, how do I not have Gamma in my in my shit? That's crazy, Jesse. Let me add this right now. But yeah, so that's like it, it's really really good for like benefiting through women. Um, hold on, I need to add this or I'll forget. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm one of these people that has to do it now or I just won't. Like I will just okay. So Alpha, where are you? Alpha, Alpha, Alpha. Stop hiding. Stop hiding. Uh, uh, maybe it's hiding his gamma. Oh my god. Okay, so I have to select file. Edit. No. No, 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 no. Add. No, no, no. What did I just do? I think I just found it. Accurious. Okay, so select file. Star file. Okay, now we got it. So it should be right here. Yes, it has been found. Let's see if they have Gemma as something different. No. And I have him now. Okay. Okay, so we have that one. So yeah, that's kind of that. Um and um aside from having that, um, Sismo was on the mid heaven. Let's see if there's anything about that. Um, no, it, it's such a minor one that it's not really giving much information. Um, but let's see what it says. No, is it a one degree orb? Yeah. So I'm not. I'm gonna ignore that one because it's 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 very it's it's not important. So anyways, that is it. I'm so happy that we uh, got those fixed stars. Um, and yeah, I look forward to... Uh, so yeah, let me know. Um, let me know, let me know if you want to do the uh, the double reading. Uh, of course, it'll be a live reading. Um, we'd set it up. And um, I highly, highly suggest it. Like, I think every single person has done it so far. And every single person has been just like amazed. Because what I do is I report it, but I don't post it publicly. Like, I just send it to you. So you have not only, like, the follow-up, which can be so helpful to kind of add to the nail chart as time passes. Because, like, you know, people, like, is there something to attach to my chain? Like, yeah, people, like, want to watch their nail chart, like, three, four years later. If, you know, they want to, like, see it. So um, I suggest that. Of course, everyone has different financial situations. But if it's... Um, not an issue. I would highly suggest that and also doing that, you know, once a year. So let me know about that. But either way, it's been a pleasure and I thank you and I will talk to you later. Ciao.